This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, one more time, because we just can't get enough of Mr. Joe Kissel. Joe, it's great to have you back, as always. Nice to be here. It, it seems like it, it just minutes ago that we talked the last time. It, 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 it time does. Flies. Time flies, and, and your, your fingers must fly, too, the way you just roll out these books and updates to books and articles and all kinds of stuff. This time yeah, you, you should you should see what I you know I'm 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 harking back to the days before I had kids then I was really productive yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you're still productive it's just a different kind of productive yes yeah yes okay we're going to stop there uh, <laughs> this time we're going to talk about the the new update to take control of iCloud this is the fifth edition of take control of iCloud that's pretty impressive i think fifth fifth edition to icloud I, yeah it, it seems like I, I don't know it just doesn't seem like icloud has been around long enough to have five editions well it must have been about five years huh? yeah that'd be about uh, right <laughs> well you know so yeah we've we done uh, a new edition of the book every time every year but uh, then before that the earlier incarnation of this book was take control of mobile me and before that the earlier incarnation of this book was take control of dot mac so we, we never did a take control of iTools. But anyway, we've been, we've been on this topic for a really long time. And, you know, I've, I've updated this book so many times. And every time, it's, it's like a few others, like, you know, upgrading and uh, Apple Mail. Every, every time it, the, the next version of the, of the operating system comes out, I'm like, do I really need to update this again? <laughs> Surely... Surely there's not that much different in the last year. Um, and I really thought, I, I thought I could skip a year. I, I thought, it seemed to me like not that much was different in iCloud. Um, but I started looking at what was new and I'm like, whoa, this is going to require a lot of surgery on this book. And, um, and I still, I mean, I still wouldn't have done the update if this were not a very, uh, if, if it weren't selling really well, but people really love this book, they, and it continues to sell at a much higher rate than, let's say, my Apple Mail book, um, and it's it's clearly a topic that people are interested in. By which I mean they're really irritated with iCloud and they want some help. <laughs> so um, the combination of people really want the book and a lot has changed has resulted in what is now. A fifth edition, and I really don't know uh, how long we will keep doing this, but um, uh, it, 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 there was a lot to talk about. One thing you have to say about iCloud, we, we can condemn it a lot for some of the some of the failures or misses it's had, but it has added a lot of new services that fall under what Apple defines as the iCloud banner. So it's not yeah. just it's not just a cloud service that is considered iCloud. It's a lot of different things. That, that Apple bundles. And now with Sierra, we have even, it feels like one more. Yeah. So uh, Apple does keep adding, not only do they add features to the iCloud, but they sort of redefine existing features to, well, we'll call that an iCloud feature. So uh, it, it does keep growing. And and with every update to iOS and every update to, um, to Mac OS, it seems like it becomes that much harder to live without it. There, I mean, you can, you're not obligated to have an iCloud account or to turn on these features, but then like you're missing out on so many really useful and crucial parts of the operating systems that it's, it's kind of a pity not to. So it, it, is, it is an increasingly big deal. 
one kind of cloud or another, it seems like, is essential. A lot of us adopted Dropbox mm -hmm. because Dropbox was first with some things like letting third parties sync their preferences and some information through Dropbox. Now a lot of that has gone over to iCloud, or at least there's an iCloud option. Um, but iCloud has become so much so much more. Um, so I, what where do we go with this? I mean, what is what are the big updates here to iCloud since the last edition that you cover? Right. So um, one of the things that you and I have talked about at least twice before, and, and I do not want to really belabor it here, um, but optimized storage is not only a new feature in Sierra, it's a new it's an iCloud feature new in Sierra. Um, to be more precise, some aspects of Sierra's optimized storage feature involve iCloud. Not all of them do. Like the, the part where it can empty items from your trash after 30 days, that has nothing to do with iCloud. Um, and some things that are like, you know, uh, downloading, uh, you know, keeping older iTunes movies and TV shows in the cloud uh, instead of on your, uh, on your computer so you can download them later. That's you can do that even without iCloud. So there are some things that, that broadly fall under the rubric of, of optimized storage that aren't part of iCloud. But um, this, this concept of moving your desktop folder and your documents folder into iCloud Drive is definitely part of iCloud. And there's a little, if you dig into the iCloud uh, system preferences pane, go to iCloud Drive and, and click the options button, there's a little checkbox down there at the bottom um, uh, optimized Mac storage. So, um, so that basically whatever you store in iCloud Drive, whether it's your desktop and documents folder or just other whatever, any any other stuff that you put in your i in your uh, in your iCloud Drive anywhere within that folder, um, what you're basically doing by checking that box is saying, okay, Apple, you already have a, a copy of this stuff in the cloud. If it turns out that I start running out of space on my Mac, you have my permission to delete the copy that's on my Mac and just keep the copy that's in the cloud, which then I can download um, on demand if needed. Now, you know, Photos has had this capability since the beginning with iCloud Photo Library. And you've always been able to download old purchases with iTunes, you know, music and, and apps and, and TV shows and so forth. And what is, what is new in Sierra is Apple sort of generalizing that to basically anything you put in iCloud Drive. Um, and there, are, there are more aspects to optimize storage, but that's sort of the new thing. I talk about it in my Upgrading to Sierra book. I talk about it in the, the Joe on Tech Guides. But um, I talk about it in the most detail in uh, the iCloud book, because, or at least the iCloud aspects of it in, in the iCloud book, because really it is all about how iCloud functions and what will be the benefits and also what will be the consequences of using that feature. So that's... That's certainly the first, possibly the biggest thing. Okay, uh, and I know we, you said, like like you said, we talked about this a couple times before. Mm -hmm. um, I would like the, 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 though to ask you about the the consequences part. Uh, you know, benefits kind of become obvious. Consequences are where we all raise the the yellow flag um, and <laughs> and say what what could go wrong or what do I need to watch out for. The way Apple has designed this this feature, um, whether whether you're talking about the the desktop and documents folders particularly, or, or or the broader feature of just you know deleting stuff off of your Mac, um, Apple wants it to be seamless. Apple wants it to be painless. Apple wants you to you the the experience Apple wants you to have is that oh man my MacBook Air. I was feeling like I was really t squeezed with this, you know, 128 gigabyte storage, but then I installed Sierra and I checked a box and <gasps> I have all this extra room now. That's, that's what Apple, the experience you, they want you to have, that you are delighted at magically getting tens, hundreds of gigabytes of additional storage seemingly for free. And, th and that does feel kind of magical. Um, but there's also a dark magic involved. <laughs> uh, so the the part part of the worry is let's just be honest. iCloud as a whole has not been the most reliable cloud service in history. There have been one or two hundred 
incidents where things have gone wrong with iCloud and a service goes offline, or uh, performance is really slow, or you can't log in at all, or whatever. And I really worry about having any important documents existing only in iCloud Drive, because then what happens if there is an outage someplace on Apple's side or in between Apple and my Mac somewhere on the internet, um, and I can't get at those files when I need them. Um, obviously, you know, if you back up a file before it goes into the cloud, then great, it's in your backups, but what if what if your backups are set up in such a way that they can only back up files that are physically on your disk like you can't back up things that are stored in the cloud uh, using a conventional backup app so so what do you do if if something goes wrong or if uh, heaven forbid uh, Apple loses your files I mean we hope they don't um, we hope they have really great backup and security systems in place, but something could go wrong such that a file that you knew was there, you have your icon in your iCloud Drive folder, and it looks like, oh, I should just be able to double-click this, and it will download uh, almost instantly, and there's, there's my file again. But something could go wrong such that you can't access those old files. So those are the sorts of dangers that I worry about. Um, I, I appreciate the extra storage. I appreciate the added convenience. And maybe as time goes on, uh, the people who use optimized storage will find it to be completely bulletproof, and you'll hardly ever hear stories about any sorts of problems. But, you know, I, I write about backups for a living, and I write about security, and I'm, I'm used to thinking in terms of, well, what could go wrong here? And I just see uh, so many things that go wrong that um, the, the actual title of, of a certain topic in this new book is, sync your desktop and documents holders or don't. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I come right out and say, here's how you would do it if you were going to do it, but so some things to keep in mind. Are we being too paranoid over some of this, Joe? Do you think? <sighs> well, you know, that's, that's an impossible question to answer. Um, are, are you being paranoid by looking both ways before crossing the street, even though you've never been hit by a car at that intersection before? You know, it, it, it's something that you can, you can never prove, right? So, you, you could say, I have, I have used my Mac for 10 years. I've never lost a file. I had this feature turned on for however long. I've never had any problems. But then someone else will say, yeah, I turned it on and I immediately lost something. Um, so um, computers are just, you know, they're, they're just machines. And uh, sometimes they break or do unexpected things. And also people make mistakes. So um, I, I think that when it comes to technology, uh, you don't want to be like crazy, crazy paranoid, but you do want to recognize that there are there are things that can cause failures, and you don't want to be that person who who lost important work because you didn't take basic precautions. Well said. That, that, that's good. Fair answer. Good balanced answer. Good balanced answer. Um, our our page the the new pages and uh, keynote. Um, and numbers collaborative features still uh, now considered part of iCloud. I I guess I don't I don't actually know. <laughs> that's that's a really good question. Um, I, I I honestly don't know if Apple considers them to be part of iCloud. In my so I you know like I have a book on Keynote, and that book will need to be updated to talk about the new collaborative features. And then we have other people that wrote. Uh, books on numbers and uh, pages. Um, in my book about using, er, in my iCloud book, in the chapter about using the web apps, um, I don't go into that sort of detail. I just sort of say, oh yeah, also there's um, a, a web version of pages and a web version of Keynote and so forth. Um, if you want to know how to use it, you know, <laughs> go, go buy the other book. Because like, uh, you know, this book is getting ridiculously long as it is, and I really can't go into that sort of detail about every single uh, thing in this book. So, so I have I have sort of I, I I'm aware that it exists, but I have sort of defined it as being out of scope for this book, 
and even if it is an iCloud feature. Um, and um, if and when the time comes, I'll, I'll cover it in the Keynote book. I, I ask just because you're right. There's an iCloud version of Keynote. Um, if you want... If you log in to the web interface, you know these are all there, right along with right. mail and you know some other things, and that's why, as we said at the outset, uh, iCloud seems to be broadening, at least by Apple's definition, into so many different things that it's it's hard to keep up and really appreciate. Or is iCloud, I guess, just being integrated into everything across the board, so that now you just think of it almost as a separate part of the operating system? Yeah, I mean there are there are aspects of sharing collaboration for for things like uh, the the iWork apps that you don't need um, iCloud for, and um, because real time collaborative editing is not something that I ever want to do, um, I I have not. <laughs> That that could be another whole conversation. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I I really have not um, looked into it closely enough to determine if that is considered part of, of iCloud or not. Okay. So, so what is considered part of iCloud that got updated in the book? Well, so there's, there's this new feature called Universal Clipboard. Ah. And the idea is really simple. I'm, I'm using my iPhone here, and I get this, oh, yeah, I, right. I'm going to copy this, but, I, but then I need to paste it on my Mac. Now you can, that, and that's that's literally it. You copy on one Mac, you paste on another. You copy on your iPad, you paste on your iPhone. You copy on your iPhone, you paste on your like. It's just it's just that. Whatever is, whatever you copy or cut to your clipboard on one device, auto magically appears on your other devices as well. But of course, they have to be signed into the same iCloud account. So um, that is, and and it's it's a weird feature in that there is literally zero user interface. You can't turn it off. You can't turn it on. You can't specify exceptions. This is, should only work with th these kinds of apps or with this kind of data or what? I, no, it's just it, it is just it just exists as long as your your hardware is compatible and the, all your devices are signed into the same iCloud account. It is just something that automatically happens for free, which is both great and potentially troubling if you might, you know, need to have different things in your clipboard on, on different Macs. So, you know, I, I have used a bunch of different Mac utilities that save a clipboard history. So you can go back and, and paste things that you copied, you know, the thing before the current thing and the thing 10 things ago. Uh, so like Keyboard Maestro does that and Launch Bar does that. And there are, there are a whole bunch of other utilities that do that. Um, and I, I think a, a utility like that uh, could be a very handy thing for anyone who who wants this delightful aspect of, of automated clipboard syncing across devices, but also doesn't want to get into a situation where, oh, but I had a thing on the clipboard and I really needed it on the clipboard and then I did the copy the thing on the other device and it disappeared. So. So having having a, a tool that gives you a clipboard history could could solve that sort of problem. Anyways, that's that's another new iCloud feature. I, I did not. I have to admit, I did not realize that you could not turn it off. Yeah, not well. If there's if there's a way, I haven't found it yet. There's no there's no checkbox. There's no interface that I have seen to turn that off. Um, I just you know you now you made me curious, and I want to. I want to check on one thing here I, I, because, yeah, no, 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 it's not there. So, um, so I don't know. That's interesting. If, if there is a UI to turn it off, I haven't found it yet. Um, another, another new change is there is now a two terabyte um, storage level for iCloud. So if you have previously the most data you could store uh, in iCloud was one terabyte, and you pay ten bucks a month for that. Well, if you want to pay twenty dollars a month, um, you can now have two terabytes of storage. And I'm sure that part of what motivated that new level was, you know, the desktop and documents folder sync. If you're going to put all this stuff into uh, iCloud Drive, uh, one terabyte might not be enough. But like, I forget how I, I think I'm I'm at the like. 200 gigabyte level or something. I, it's it's, it's lo a fairly uh, relatively lower level, 
And um, I don't know, like I don't mind paying Apple a couple bucks a month, but paying $20 a month for online storage plus what I'm paying for crash plan plus what I'm paying for Dropbox, like, eh, I don't know. Well, yeah, a little annoying. Yeah. I, I, well, it's, it's, it's not something that you're being forced to do. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it maybe if, if in theory you could drop Dropbox or eliminate, excuse me, Dropbox and just go to iCloud, I'm not sure that would be my first choice, but you could do it if you're paying for a terabyte of Dropbox and, a ter and you want two terabytes of online storage, you, know, you could just shift it around. Yeah, well... Sort of. <laughs> a guy. A guy wrote to me, and he said, "I, you know, I heard these news stories about some things that Dropbox was doing, which made me feel suspicious, and I just didn't feel feel good about using Dropbox anymore. So I decided to uh, to cancel my Dropbox account, move everything over on to iCloud Drive, and I kind of, I kind of went." Okay, do you are you aware of what you're getting yourself into? So he's basically saying I did this and then I noticed that this didn't work. And then I noticed that I couldn't do that. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Um so even though superficially iCloud Drive seems very similar to Dropbox, there are a lot of things that Dropbox can do that iCloud Drive can't do. I mean, iCloud can do a billion things that, that Dropbox can do, but, it, but it's the other way too. So, for example, you know, iCloud Drive does not have the sharing features that Dropbox has. You know, you just want to send somebody a link to a file or invite them to a folder or whatever. You can do that in Dropbox. You can't do that in iCloud Drive. And weirdly, ironically, um, very, very oddly, there are the support for iCloud on iOS is, in many cases, less than the support for Dropbox. So, for, for example, uh, if you use 1Password, which of course all right-thinking people do, um, <laughs> um, and you want to sync your passwords between your Macs, you can use iCloud, no problem. But if you want to sync your passwords to your mm -hmm. iPhone, you got to use Dropbox. I mean, you can do it over Wi-Fi too, but I mean, if you want to use cloud storage, you can't use iCloud. You have to use Dropbox because um, there, and this, this is, this is true for, for some other apps as well. Um, just because there are, um, I'm sorry, I, I said, <laughs> I, have, I have to take back what I, what I just said. I, I said one password that was, and, and but one password does sync with iCloud. Um, what I meant to say was Devon think. So un unhear that, uh, okay. re replace, go, go back in time, replace one password with Devon. So one <laughs> password can sync with, I with iCloud, but, but Devon think cannot. Um, and that is because the type of syncing that Devon think needs to do with your documents, um, just can't currently be done with the type of access to iCloud Drive that they can get on an iOS device. It can, it can happen between Macs, but it can't happen Mac to iOS or iOS to iOS. So if you have DevonThink to go on your iOS device and DevonThink on your Mac and you want them to talk to each other, um, you cannot use Dropbox, sorry, you cannot use uh, iCloud Drive to do that. You have to use Dropbox. So just a couple of examples, but the point is simply that um, it seems as though, uh, at a very high level, it seems as though, yeah, well, I'm not happy with Dropbox, or I don't want to pay two providers. Oh, fine, I'll just, I'll just drop this, and I'll use iCloud Drive for it. But when you look into the details, um, it, it, it gets a lot, lot trickier and more complicated than it at first appears. Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software. Software like PDF Pen, available in various flavors for Mac and iOS, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iOS, and Text Expander for Mac and iOS. Get all the details at smilesoftware.com. Smile has updated PDF Pen to version 8.1 with some new and useful enhancements to help you place objects in your PDF documents with ease and accuracy. Visible guidelines help you line up and position text and graphics and other objects. To make things even easier, these guides can snap into place to be sure what you want to place is exactly where you want to place it. Because PDFs aren't just about text. PDF Pen Pro adds those same guides, as well as preserving tab order after saving your documents. 
These enhancements just add to all of the PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro features we've talked about before. Features like optical character recognition to make the text in PDF documents editable, secure redaction of documents, the ability to move, resize, or delete images from the original PDF, recording and playback of audio comments, exporting to Microsoft Word, and many more. It may seem like a simple feature, but I just use PDF Pen's ability to add, rearrange, and delete pages in PDF documents on a 130-page document that needed to be edited before being distributed. It was a snap with PDF Pen. Right now, you can try PDF Pen for yourself for free by visiting smilesoftware.com and downloading a trial version. Once you know what PDF Pen can do for you, buy directly from Smile and take command of your PDF documents. That's PDF Pen from Smile at smilesoftware.com, the makers of world-class software. Try it and you won't want to go back. Thanks to Smile as the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. I, I'm, I think I'm right about this too. Dropbox, you can share things between the Mac and Windows and other other platforms. Oh, yeah. iCloud, iCloud Drive, you cannot. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, there, there are some aspects of iCloud that are available in Windows, but you certainly don't get the extensive uh, integration that you do um, on a Mac. So, um, for you know, for people who live entirely on a Mac or entirely within the Apple ecosystem, iCloud Drive is often an okay choice. But you know, the the sharing and the the collaboration stuff, um, among other things, just and 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 of course the the support for that other platform just isn't quite there. I mean, you know, in, in my book, I talk about I talk about Windows. It is it is a platform neutral book, um, and there is a lot of stuff that you can do with iCloud on Windows but just not nearly as much as on a Mac or iOS device. Okay. So, you know, it seems like we're always talking about the, the negatives um, and what you can't do. And we've touched on some of those and a few of the things we can do. What are some new things we can do with, with iCloud Drive? Oh, excuse me, with iCloud, pardon me. With yeah, iCloud. so one of the changes that happened um, in the last few months um, was with, with iTunes Match. So iTunes Match is an optional feature. Um, you know, iCloud itself is free. You pay for extra storage. You also pay extra 25 bucks a year for iTunes Match, um, which lets you uh, upload all of your songs. If Apple already has them in the iTunes library, then it won't upload them. It'll just say, yeah, notice that you have that. And if you have a track that isn't in their library, um, it'll upload it so that you can then uh, access your music from all of your devices. Um, and you could even delete all of your stuff off your local device, sort of a form of optimized storage and, and download stuff or stream stuff as you need it. So iTunes Match has been around for a long time, but then Apple built something kind of similar to it into Apple Music. It was kind of similar, but it wasn't exactly the same. And so there were situations in which a person might find it necessary to uh, to both pay for to pay for both Apple Music and iTunes Match, which is kind of nutso. Um, but a few months ago, Apple made some changes such that um, uh, Apple Music now incorporates all the functionality that iTunes Match had. So if you want that capability and you have Apple Music, you no longer need to even think about using iTunes Match. Um, on the other hand, if you don't uh, subscribe to Apple Music, don't want to subscribe to Apple Music, um, iTunes Match remains the same. You can still do, you can still subscribe separately, do all the things you used to do. Um, it's just that you will no longer find yourself in the position of, uh, you know, being tempted to uh, subscribe to both because that, that, that area where they didn't quite overlap has been eliminated. Does that count against your uh, iCloud storage limit for you when you um, upload music? No. No, it doesn't. Um, you have a limit of 100,000 tracks, um, but um, that does not that is, that is not considered part of your iCloud. Um, your it's not it's not considered part of the part of the storage that they track um, for your for your account. That's that's in addition. Um, just looking over my list here, you know, some updated system requirements, some updated setup stuff. 
Um, another thing that's changed since, not really recently, but certainly since the last edition of this book, is that Mail Drop is now available both on iOS and in the Mail web app. Uh, so that means that if you attach a file to an email message and it's over like 20 megabytes or something, um, that Apple Apple Mail, re regardless of what platform you're using, will upload the file to iCloud and put a link to it in your email message instead of sending the entire file as an attachment to the message, um, which is great because that means you can send much bigger files and it, it won't um, slow down your mail and the other person's mail and you won't get all these error messages about attachment is too large. Um, so mail drop is, is, is nice. It, it was nice from the start, but now it extends to both other platforms. Um, and another thing that the, really the last big thing that changed, again, not super recently, but since the last edition of the book, was that Apple has fully rolled out their uh, new-ish two-factor authentication system. So um, originally there was two-step verification where it's an extra security feature and you know you get this special code that you need in addition to a pass to a password to do certain things. Um, and then they they came up with a an easier to use yet more secure uh, version of this system called two-factor authentication. But for the longest time um, it was only available to a very select subset of iCloud users, and frustratingly, I wasn't one of them. Um, but then, very shortly after the last edition of the book came out, Apple opened it up to everyone. Um, and so uh, so this, this book now completely covers using that newer system as well, and I, and I highly recommend it. It's uh, a way to make it very, very difficult for someone to hack into your account, even if they know your password. Um, it's a really, uh, really good idea. Sound, <clears throat> sounds good. Sounds good. Um, it, I, I don't know where we are on, on your list, but, but one thing I want to make sure we just touch on. Anything that iPhone and iPad users need to be aware of with the new iCloud, uh, other than, I mean, some of what we talked about with, with the... Um, uh, with the optimized storage, but anything else uh, that is changed or significantly different? Nothing that immediately comes to mind. I'll probably think of something as. as, well, as that probably means it, it. Obviously, means it's not front and center in the mind. So probably. Yeah, not. I mean, one thing that is not in any way new, but I but I think it's worth mentioning again, is that there's this iCloud iCloud feature called backup called iCloud backup. It, it is not applicable to your Mac. It is applicable only to your, your iOS devices, your iPads and iPhones and iPod touches. Um, and it's an, it's an important feature, a useful feature. Apple will back up all, all of the data from your device. It's not going to make an additional copy of like your music and your apps because Apple already has those things. But it's going to back up your photos and, you know, contacts and calendars and, and other like personal information, your settings and stuff. So you can back up your iPhone to your Mac if you want to, PC if you want to, or you can back it up to iCloud. iCloud's really easy to use, really handy. The only thing is, though, iCloud backup doesn't work like ordinary backups. Ordinary backups, you're like, oh, man, I accidentally deleted a picture. So I'm going to go get that picture out of my backups. Or, oh, man, I accidentally deleted you know, a file. So I'm going to go get that file out of my backups. Now, those might not be the best examples because, in fact, if you go to the iCloud.com website, um, there there is a way to undelete certain uh, certain files and, and other items. But um, but in other cases, like in cases where you um, accidentally overwrote some, uh, you know, an older version with a newer version, you really wanted the older version, or there's some you just want one contact, but not all of your contacts from your backups. So you want one event but not all of your events from your calendar or one app's worth of settings but not all of your settings you're kind of stuck because iCloud backup does not let you restore individual items if you're going to use iCloud backup to restore your iPhone or iPad you got to wipe it you got to wipe the whole thing erase it completely and then restore the entire thing from your backup and that's really irritating because it takes a long time and 
things always get screwed up when <laughs> during restores. They just they just do. Um, and if anything changed between when that backup was stored and current time, those changes will be lost. Um, so iCloud backup is useful. It's not a bad idea, but you just have to be aware that it isn't like ordinary backups. You can't just go in and, and retrieve one arbitrary piece of information. It's all or nothing. Um, and um, I, I, wish it, I wish it were a lot more granular. I know Apple's trying to keep it easy to use, but you know, restoring your entire iPhone because you need to get one photo isn't really easy to use in my book. No, I agree with you. And, and, and I, I, you said something there that I think is really important because I know a lot of folks don't understand it and they get surprised that uh, your movies, your TV shows, your podcasts, which of course are the most important thing on your iPhone, um, are, are, are not backed up. So you, know, you would have to re-download those if you decide to to, to go that direction, I don't right. even. Th they're not even backed up when you do uh, a hardwired backup to iTunes. No, no, they, so. they aren't. They aren't backed up under the under the logic that well, Apple already has a copy on their servers, so why would you need an extra copy? Right. But you know, it, it has. It does happen regularly that Apple uh, removes content from iTunes, um, TV shows, movies. Some apps, uh, sometimes um, you know, music that you used to be able to purchase. Some you know, some artist or studio or whatever uh, changes their legal agreement. They decide to pull it from Apple, and then that that thing is no longer available from the iTunes Store. Well, if you didn't have a local backup, you can't restore that thing. It's it's very nice of Apple to. I mean, the 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 idea is is really neat. That you, why should we make an extra copy of something we have? But the flip side of that is if we stop selling this thing and no longer have a copy, we're not going to tell you. We're not going to say, by the way, you better download this now because it's not going to be, be available tomorrow. No, they don't do that. So um, that's why I, I make sure to keep local copies somewhere, at least on a backup drive of all the media that I purchased from Apple. Yeah. It's, Again, there, you think some of this stuff should be so simple, but it can get very complex, especially when you start factoring in things like storage, uh, both cloud and local. Um, you, you have Macs that have multiple terabytes of storage, and then you have uh, <laughs> you have MacBooks and iPhones and iPads that don't. You know, it's it, it it's a, it's it's quite a jumble that they're trying to work through and have it make some kind of sense. And sometimes we struggle to find out what sense it makes. Yeah, so. we do. Um, okay, so you know, it's that time where we find out how many pages and all of that stuff about uh, this book. And this is again the fifth edition. So you know, yeah, it's probably uh, has grown. How many pages? How many pages? I'm going to open this up um, as we are recording this. Um, the book is still being edited, and so the final page count uh, might change a little bit. The previous version, the, the uh, fourth edition, was, let's see here, 167 pages. Um, so far, um, this uh, new edition is 181. So, you know, it's, it's grown a bit. It might be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter by the time it's all the production steps have happened. Um, but it's, uh, it has a lot of content. A lot of this new stuff really took quite a lot of, uh, of words to explain thoroughly. So it's a $15 ebook as usual. Uh, people who had an earlier version will get uh, a, a cheaper upgrade path and you can uh, click ebook extras on the on the cover or you probably get an email about it um, for the the upgrade details. Uh, but for new purchasers $15 it's a pretty comprehensive guide to all the stuff um, Almost, almost all the stuff iCloud does. You know, you're you're quizzing me about. Well, like, you know, is is the collaborative editing in in iWork is that part of iCloud? And I didn't even know. Um, there, there are just there are certain topics that, due to sheer length, I have just have to say I'm not even going to care about this for this book. But um, for for the most prominent aspects of iCloud, anyway, um, it's pretty comprehensive, and uh, I I hope that it helps ease some frustrations, at least, um, helps you to know where you're likely to get into trouble and avoid those spots, and just have a, a smoother and, and more satisfying experience using iCloud. Yeah, and, and to kind of 
bring it full circle. I mean, we could we haven't even touched on mail, which is I guess technically an iCloud service. So you know that's I, I was not surprised that you really hadn't got into the collaborative stuff. Um, it's just I know it's one of the things that I looked at and said, wow, that looks really interesting. If it works, I hope it works. You know, I haven't had a chance to try it out because I'm not on Sierra as we record this, but mm -hmm. I will be soon. So yeah, a lot a lot here, a lot here, and a lot to keep up sure. with, and and a lot to be aware of what what could go wrong and what could go right. Yeah. So, Take Control of iCloud, 5th edition, Mr. Joe Kissel, TakeControlBooks.com. Go get it now, and you will have a much better time with iCloud. No question. Joe, I, I, I don't think there's any question we'll be seeing each other again soon because there's always something new going. Uh, it's just a question of how many books you are writing or upgrading at once. Well, I only have two hands, so really I can only be writing two at once. Is that okay? <laughs> and until you figure out voice dictation along with both hands going. Uh, that would be some heavy-duty multitasking. Uh, no question. Joe, thanks so much. My pleasure. Folks, we'll have more uh, with Joe Kissel. We'll have more from everyone in the Apple community that we can think of. We hope we will see you back here, too. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.